Hello YouTube, this is Anthony Faraci with episode 2 of Building an RTS in Unity. Now, I've taken the liberty of changing the name of the unit detector to unit manager. And this is where we're going to put all of the unit related scripts. Now, last minute I decided to use a class system for the unit manager, so that's where we're going to go with. So in your scripts folder, we're going to create a new JavaScript, and we're going to call this unit manager. And this will have the array and the actual unit class in it. Now the array will be an array of all of the units that are in the current scene and that you could actually use. And then in the class will just be two functions, create and destroy. The create function obviously creates a new unit. The destroy function obviously destroys a unit. Now, you don't have to do it inside of a class, but... It, I guess it's just easier for me to differentiate what's cr what's being created and what's being destroyed because we will have different things being created and destroyed in the script, such as buildings, maybe resources, and etc. So let's make this class. We'll call it unit. Yeah, we'll just call this unit. And there we will have our function create. And then our function destroy. And per we will have a parameter for destroy. It will be id and it will be an int. Basically, that will differentiate what unit we're actually destroying. Now, before we do anything, let's make this a public class. Because the we won't be creating new instances of the class. We will just be using the class as its own, just calling unit.create unit.destroy and etc. So let's test this out. Or before we actually test anything, let's make the array. So we're gonna call this units and it will be an array. And we will actually make it not equal to anything. We'll just make it like that. And then function start we will make units equal to a new unit array. Or do we want to do that? Actually, no. Let's not do it like that. Sorry. That actually wouldn't work. So, sorry about all that. <laughs> In this function, start, we just want to put unit.create. Now, when you're dealing with public classes, you want to make these functions static so they can be called outside of the um, this class itself. So we're just going to do unit built it wrong unit dot create, and that will just create that will just call the create function once you start so it'll spawn one um, AI or one unit now let's actually start editing this function so we're just before we before we do anything let's actually add a few parameters to the create function we want a position so just pause, and that'd be a vector three. Rotation, which would be rod, and that would be a quaternion. And then ID, which would be an int. I know I said we wouldn't be putting parameters in this create function, but I just realized it would be very necessary. So now we're just going to want to do game object. Instantiate. You don't have to do game object instantiate. You could just do instantiate, but I have terrible spelling and I can never remember how to spell it correctly, so doesn't really matter. Oh, we also forgot one very important um, piece of code, which would be the actual game object itself. So we want to do uh, obj, and then this would be a game object. Reason this is very important is 
is because it's the actual model that will be instantiated. So let's go obj pause rot and that should be all I need. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> now we have to go into this unit.create call that I did up here, and we will just put all this information in. So, game object. Uh, you know what? No, let's just. Let's make a variable called object or geo, and it will be a game object. So we'll do geo vector three dot zero. How did I just do that? Then quaternion identity and zero. And that's the basic unit creation function. Now let's go continuity, make sure we don't have any errors. And do for some reason. Action start. That's odd and deep. Function start, then unit dot create. It's throwing me a weird error that I really don't know why. I guess it's nothing. So, yeah, I guess it was just nothing. So let's drag this unit manager onto the unit manager itself. And we have to add a game object to it. So, <clears throat> just create a cube. It's going to be a base unit. And we'll make this prefab right in here. Now we'll go to Unit Manager, Base Unit, and on start it should spawn that base unit right here. Perfect. When we X out, it just disappears. So. Um, that's pretty much it for the create function. It's not very hard. So, now let's actually make the array of different, what do you want to call them, um, different units. So, we're just going to do var units is a array of game objects. Yes, this is an array of game objects. Now, on start. Do we want to do this? Actually, let's not put this unit array in there. We will put it in the unit class itself. So let's make a variable of units. Um, just unit. Then. Static. We just want a normal function. We want units to be equal to a new game object array. To array of, let's say, 100. So on the create method, after we instantiate, we want the 
bar unit. to equal whatever ID in the array. So, units ID is equal to new unit. And there we go. That will have basically everything that you need. So, Go over here. Now we get an error. An instance of type unit is required to access non static member units. Hmm. Let's just completely get rid of that init function and keep it like that. Still giving us the same error, which is weird, but. Wow. There we go. We just had to make this variable static. Now, if we did this correctly, it should add it to the... unless it creates it, fine, that's nice. Now let's go into the script on create. Let's just do a little debug. log we're going to log units dot length plus that just so it's a string just to make sure that units is actually 100 long which it is as you can see right here so this basic system is done I know this tutorial has been a bit disheveled and just kind of unorganized, which I hope all my other tutorials will not. It's just I didn't think of doing this whole class system until last minute and just organizing everything in one script. So, I hope everybody understood what happened and understands basically why everything works and how everything works and I hope you tune in to episode 3 which I will most likely be recording in about five minutes so I guess have a good day